day six. We're gonna talk about how to break through toxic patterns. I'm gonna teach you three ways to break the, the unhealthy patterns that are keeping you stuck. Um, these are the unhealthy patterns that are basically coming from those feelings that are um, shooting us into that, that unuseful part of our brain, the, the limbic part of the brain, where we just recycle old information. So I'm going to teach you how to break through that. And, you know, this week we have seen people breaking through and achieving things that they have been trying all year to achieve. And, and that's incredible, you know, from where I'm sitting, that's absolutely beautiful. It's incredible and it started with clarifying that vision and then we've been aligning your language and your thoughts to, to basically level up with the energy in your vision. And this weekend is about letting go. So we've also started to identify the, the subconscious counter intentions born out of those fears that are created by those past experiences and how powerful those are to blocking your manifest, manifestation success. So this weekend we are putting into action, letting go, and this is a powerful part of losing the shackles to those emotions that keep us stuck. And today I'm going to talk about the patterns linked to those emotions um, and I'm going to go way back and I'm going to go deep so I hope you stay with me. Um, when I was a kid it was, it was challenging and the reason for that is that my mum suffers with bipolar and my dad worked really hard to, to run his own businesses and so he worked heaps of hours and was often out of our house. And that meant that my mum, who kind of struggled with life, was left at home with us. And she didn't cope very well with that. And she often lost her temper and lashed out at me and my brother. And I remember me and my brother really acting out to get attention from her. But it was always the wrong type of attention, you know. It was anger. Or on the other side, she would just completely disconnect and pretend that we weren't even there. And I know now that her world for her back then, even now actually, she's, she's still, mm -hmm. still unwell, um, her world was too overwhelming and she couldn't find her way out of her world to be mother to us. Um, and I remember looking at her from the outside, from the eyes of a child and really learning through her reactions that life is really tough. Um, and now when I look back, I also know that I developed a really deep lack of self-worth because I wasn't significant in her world and, and neither was my brother. When I was in my early teens, my dad lost his business and we subsequently lost everything. So our house, the, um, we went to private school but we, we sort of got taken out of that and my mum took me and my brother away to live in our holiday home, which was this, this little chalet, while my dad stayed and basically tried to pick up all the pieces of everything falling apart. Um, and subsequently they were apart for four years and their relationship really suffered through that strain of this financial mess. Um, but of course in this time I grew up. So when my dad moved back in with us, he, he really didn't know me and my brother anymore and he didn't really recognize us or know how to interact with us. I was this teenager who wore makeup and short skirts and had a mobile phone and it, so boyfriends, I had boyfriends um, and he was also very depressed. So even though he'd kind of got stuff together and, and come back to us and, and my mum and dad were giving things a good shot, he was really, really low and he felt like he'd failed us as, as our father and he got very violent with me and my brother. So I know now looking back that that made me once again not feel good enough, you know. Whatever I did and I tried, I remember trying to, to connect with him and sort of be seen by him and heard by him. But I just kept getting anger for being who I was, which was just a kid, you know, a kid who was growing up and learning about the world. 
And so whatever I did wasn't worthy of his love and my mum's attention. I know I always had her love, but I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it back then. And I didn't feel as important as their struggle. So everything else was more important. Money was seemingly more important. And, and the irony is that me and my brother didn't care that we'd moved into a, a chalet in the woods. We were in the forest and it was this giant playground and we'd gotten to go there with my nan as well and she was awesome. We loved the bones of her and she really spent a lot of time being mum in that time when my mum couldn't really be mum and had to work heaps of hours because she was then a single parent providing for us. Um, but in my mum and dad's eyes, it was a loss. And them living through that grief of, yeah, I guess losing everything, me and my brother were collateral damage. I want you to know I don't blame my parents. I'm a parent now and ironically, I wound up in the same situation. So I was on the point of losing everything and so stressed, I told you, I was so stressed, so caught up in my own struggle that when we were in that food bank, I hadn't noticed that my children were hungry. And is there some irony in that? Actually, no, because it's the patterns in my life that I repeated because of the self-worth, that the lack of self-worth that I felt as a child growing up that actually took me to that place. So, um, the self-worth really grew as I grew and I had other experiences that actually proved that I wasn't worthy, you know, in my eyes. So I'm going to give you an example. When I came out of u university, I got an awesome job. I landed a really good job that surprised me because I'd actually come out of university with not one single clue what I wanted to do. I'd actually gone in wanting to teach gone away and taught and realized that I didn't want to be a teacher. So I came out of university clueless um, with the world at my feet and I ended up in this am amazing job. And I shot, shot to the top in this job. I literally went up the ladder really, really fast. And at 25, I'm actually managing a portfolio of shopping centers and working with their sustainability, trying to um, bring their carbon footprint down. And I did, and I won an award for these achievements. Um, so when we went to the awards night, I got so drunk that I remember at one point I couldn't actually get off the toilet. I had found the whole experience so overwhelming that I had drunk to kind of numb it. And I was legless. I remember looking at the girls that I was competing against for this award and, and seeing them as picture perfect. You know, they were perfectly sober and absolutely, in my eyes right there, more deserving of the award than I was. And I couldn't figure out how the hell I won. And there I was, this hot shop facilities, young facilities manager of the year, pretty much being held up by my partner, who's now my husband, thankfully. And we had to leave the event early. And in front of all of my bosses, the big wigs of the company, I was a complete wreck. <laughs> um, now I know that I was battling my self-worth demons. I can appreciate that now. I didn't feel good enough to win that award. I didn't feel like I deserved that award. I was battling with the pain and the experience of the rape, which had happened a few years earlier. And, you know, in, in that scenario, I, I was one of, what, a hundred girls out that night. And it was me who'd got my drink spiked and ended up in that situation. And, you know, my lack of self-worth was showing up in, or was affecting how I was showing up in every single area of my life. And I got into this pattern of self-sabotage um, if I got too close to success because I didn't believe that I deserved it. And I also didn't believe that I could handle it if I got it. Um, I screwed up jobs. I screwed up that job, actually. Um, I would get super fit in my training. I'm an athlete. I've always done training. I'd get super fit and then I'd go and get drunk to spoil myself. Um, always to prove to myself that I wasn't worth it or to avoid the success. So when I developed my anxiety disorder, um, life got a lot safer 
and it held me back from a lot of things so I didn't need to go out and wreck them it was very convenient um, and I think you know I couldn't go out and wreck stuff at this point so it was a good alternative I would I was with my partner we were planning children um, however that safe bubble of anxiety um, prevented me taking the action that I needed to conveniently in my business it stopped me playing big so is it ironic that I ended up in exactly the same place as my mum and dad, repeating that pattern of struggle? No, I actually took myself there because I was repeating that pattern of not feeling good enough and self-sabotaging my own success. It's just that the anxiety was a different form of self-sabotage. So what did I fear? I feared everything. Um, I feared, I think, most succeeding because I feared feeling the fall that my parents felt, or maybe the alternative was not experiencing the fall, but being found out at the top that I, I you know, was a fraud and, and could never handle that success that I'd created and then falling anyway. For me, the fall felt inevitable and that's what I feared and I couldn't handle that fear. Um, you know, I'd seen, I'd seen my mum's sadness and I'd lived through my dad's failure. When I was about 16, I got home from school and I went into his bedroom, her, my parents' bedroom, to find them, to tell them about something in my day and I found him unconscious. And to this day, we don't know what he took or what he mixed it with. We, we know he mixed alcohol with tablets um, and we had to call an ambulance. Um, but he told me later that he wanted out that day. He was done. And I couldn't deal with that fall. It absolutely terrified me. And yet, when I hit rock bottom, what terrified me more was putting my children through that fear. The, the you know, I, I didn't want them to feel like they weren't worthy of my love, of my presence, of everything that I was put on this earth to give them. I realized that when I was shackled to my negative emotional patterns that, and, and stressed and being affected by everything that was going on around me, that I wasn't present for them. And this is what I went through as a child. And I realized as well that when I was busy being busy and working on all the stuff that was external to me to try and get my business off the ground because it scared me to work on myself, I was also not being present for them and I also wasn't going forward in my business so nothing was changing and in realizing that absolutely everything changed and I was going to change everything and it needed to start within um, so a big break in the pattern for me was actually spending some money on myself so I'd never felt worthy of investing in myself um, in my own personal development. So I committed to changing that immediately. For the first time I broke that pattern and I began investing in courses, um, in coaching, to start that process of healing my internal condition so that I could take control of those negative thoughts that were recycling the same emotions that were causing me to live in the past. And I became really fierce about learning and that brought me into that beautiful frontal lobe of my brain, that neocortex where we find our best answers about what we need to do to become the best versions of ourselves and then we manifest our success. Um, and in a moment, I'm going to share with you the three ways to break your patterns. But first, I want to share with you something really exciting and something that means a lot to me in terms of its creation. Um, and it's the course that I created out of my journey so that you can take the journey that I took from the day that I decided I was going to change my life, from the day that it took me um, from, from there to be the best best version of myself, that actually took me a year or the best part of a year. And I really believe that through this course, you can fast track that time significantly. And you know, this week you've seen how fast change can happen 
when you start looking in the right place for answers, and that place is within you. So the course is called From Fear to Fierce, because it's about becoming fierce about your belief in you, and many of you have identified this week that you have strong limiting beliefs that are holding you back from taking the action that you need, and you are identifying your own self-sabotage that is driven by your fears. So through the work that you've just done this week, you've cleared some of those blocks and you've taken action that you've not been able to pre previously. So this is about keeping up the momentum. Um, from, fears to, from fear to fears is going to help you cut off all the other options that, that basically don't lead to your success. Uh, there's going to be no more excuses, no more hesitation, no more procrastination, and no more second guesses. Just solutions and no more focusing on the problems and being blocked by your limits, your false starts, and failures. From Fear to Fierce is going to help you to continue to clear that space in your mind that allows you to function in your neocortex. So you're going to be finding your own answers. You're going to be connecting to that powerful inner voice and hand, having the belief that allows you to um, trust your gut. Go with those gut feelings and actually confidently walk in the direction of your success and your greatness because it's your greatness that is going to attract that success because like attracts like in manifestation. So there's four areas that we work on in the course and the first one is, is continuing to clarify the vision of what you want. We also, the second part is gaining, continuing to gain better awareness of your past experiences that have created the limiting beliefs that are holding you from back, from living your best life. Part number three is controlling those negative thought patterns and achieving peace of mind. Number four is motivating action that walks through fear. And actually there's a fifth area as well because mm -hmm. doing that work, that inner work, actually allows your fear to heal you. So you all identified the other day when I did my beautiful example of the three scenarios. We had the first scenario, which is you avoiding personal development like I did, like trying to cross that road in Thailand and avoiding all the tuk-tuks that are just, you know, coming in your direction, you just batting them off. Um, scenario C was basically working on yourself and having a plan or, or, or taking action. So working on yourself, taking action simultaneously. So the way to work on yourself is to become fierce in the belief that you can have everything in your life that you desire. We saw that with the acronym BEAR. It all starts with belief that drives the enthusiasm, that drives the action, that drives the results. So you're going to become fiercely confident in your abilities and fiercely dedicated to the potential in your life and, and finding that potentiality that's currently untapped. And the bonus is that your action will be planned because I help you plan your action um, with backup strategies as well. So I'm going to talk you through that in a minute. So from fear to fierce is eight practical exercises, a little bit of video and a help, like helpful handouts through every single mod um, and video support as well. Also keep sheets as well, so if you keep some sort of a, a journal, you can print these out and you can keep them so that you're keeping a track of your learning and your growth and your progression, um, those brain tattoos, you know, that are they're gonna help you keep going on the, on the right path. So module one helps you understand where you are and what you want. We dig a lot deeper into the vision of your best life um, and we dig deeper into the blocks to it as well. So we really look at where your life is out of balance. Oftentimes there are areas of our life that are unbalanced, imbalanced, and that really affects our, our manifestation of success because it's clutter. Um, and we also dig into the action that's gonna take you forward. Module two is deep self-discovery. I love this part of the course. It's understanding who you were before life happened and understanding your inherent strengths and weaknesses, your inherent character, um, and discovering your authentic self 
And then a powerful exercise establishing the beliefs that have been layered on top of that. So we figure out what you believe to be true about the world and we figure out what you believe to be true about yourself um, so that you can make a decision as to whether these beliefs are true, firstly, and secondly, whether they're serving you and take the control of the fear in play in those beliefs. So we identify the action that you would take should that fear be out of the way. Um, and, and this is such a powerful part of the course. Then we get into the science of your brain. So for me, really understanding how my brain works was it was very empowering because we're not talking intangibles. We're talking tangibles, you know, how we physically rewire our brain with new thought. So module three is how you can use your brain's neuroplasticity to rewire your thoughts. And we also go into how you're going to rewire it, what, what you're rewiring it with, which is exciting. And then module four, the, the final module, is an empowering goal setting um, action planning section so that you have a plan with backup strategies to go forward in action as you're working on yourself. The investment for From Fear to Fears is 249 US dollars. However, if you'd prefer to pay in installments, there is a, a monthly option. So it works out at four, four, sorry, $49, 49 US dollars a month, which is just a little bit over $10 a week to really change your life. And for 24 hours, so we're at 5.23 New Zealand time right now. So for 24 hours, Sunday afternoon, New Zealand time, I'm throwing in a free session with me as well. So you get me as extra support through the course for, or just as accountability. You can bank that session and use it when you feel like you're ready for it. Um, and you may just want to work with me after this week. You may not feel like a course is right for you, um, but you may have identified it's your time to crack this thing and want some dedicated support. So if you do, reach out to me to discuss. And I'm going to put a link for From Fear to Fierce in the comments so you can go and check it out. Um, you can probably do the whole course in a week if you get your head down. But the beauty of a course is that you can actually work on it at your own pace and continue the beautiful momentum that you've started here this week with support from a framework that will work for you. And you're going to fast track your success so that you don't have to spend a whole year in transformation like I did. And I'm not going to go without giving you your three ways, like promised, to change your unhealthy patterns like I did. So number one, you stare down the fear of the unknown. So this is something that you're definitely going to be able to do with From Fear to Fierce under your belt. Um, number two is that you attack discomfort. So <clears throat> if you feel uncomfortable about something, you can bet your bottom dollar that it is exactly the thing that's going to take you closer to your success. So number two is you, you just go out and if it feels uncomfortable, you do it. Um, and number three is that you identify your patterns of self-sabotage and you do the opposite. So what a, just a minor self-sabotage for me was to not invest in myself. So I broke that pattern and I did the opposite and I changed my life. Um, so that's everything. Like I say, I'll put that link in the comments so that you can go away and have a look at the course. Um, and around to 5.30 ish tomorrow afternoon New Zealand time I'll be chucking in that that free session as well as a, an extra bonus um, and we will have another live tomorrow our final day of putting into practice that letting go um, and I'm going to have some more help for you um, in tomorrow's live before we finish up an incredible week I I thank you guys for just being here and being incredible um, and you know, talk about high energy, your breakthroughs has, they've just been so uplifting for me and we rise by lifting others. So my energy is, is high as a kite right now. So have a good um, Saturday or Friday or where, where, whatever it is where you are and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Mm -hmm.